Grow Cookies is proudly sponsored by Board Bia and StopFoodWaste.ie. What I love about garlic is how easy it is to grow. It's pretty much as simple as popping it in the ground and waiting until June. But if you can't hold on that long, you've got options. Isn't that right, Mick? There's a thing called green garlic, which is where you harvest it before it's ready effectively. And you can basically eat the entire plant. So you can eat, like the stem is still green. You can chop that up and use it in soups and stir fries and it's oh, absolutely yum. amazing. Now, to me, I'm, I'm growing garlic at home because I want, it, I want bulbs of garlic, that's what I want. So I don't tend to eat it when it's green, maybe just one or two of the plants just to try out if you want to can do that. Can we take one out now yeah, just to have, have a little look? Absolutely. And what I will tell you as well is whether we've got any Let me go down happening. well deep now so to not that's damage it, yeah. the bulb. And the other thing is, there's, there's varieties of garlic where it actually sends up a kind of a, a very straight stem and forms a kind of flowering, uh, it starts to flower on top and that's called a garlic scape, which is also a bit of a delicacy. If you can get your hands on them, they're absolutely brilliant to eat. Dude, as I well. don't know if there's anything actually here. Yeah, there you go. So that, it's, yeah, like, so it's, it's still very tiny because it so hasn't... So it looks like a, an onion like or a scallion. scallion. Exactly, yeah. And that would be just brilliant to eat. Like up as far as here, you can eat, you can eat the entire thing. Green garlic's really good, but you can see by that, that needs a couple of, uh, you know, a couple more weeks yeah. or, or six weeks even in the soil before that will be ready as, as a bulb of garlic. You'd have a slight concern at the size of this now. It's supposed to be ready in, you know, a couple of weeks time and it's very, very small still. And part of the problem with, with spring, spring sown garlic, which is what this is, is that it doesn't have a kind of an, enough time in the soil when there's a real co cold in the snap. cold, yeah, okay. So it may not amount to much this year, unfortunately, but we'll, we'll give it another couple of weeks and see how it goes. And worst case scenario, you can still, can still, have still eat garlic. it as that lovely okay. green garlic and it'd be great. So can we replant this now to let it... No. no, take this and use but it. You can take it into the kitchen and we'll make up a nice soup or something like that from it and it'll be... And excellent. have lovely garlicky breath. Lovely garlicky breath. No dates for KOD tonight. No. Okay. <laughs> Now, what you might not know is that myself and Mick have day jobs working for an organisation called GIY, which stands for Grow It Yourself. Every year, GIY rocks up to Bloom in the Park to talk to all the festival goers about the great work that we do and to encourage them to do a bit more growing, whether that's at home, at school, at work or in their community. Bloom obviously is a very big event, big event for us in Board B and it's something we started 11 years ago. It's a national event and we have a lot of international visitors as well. We have a 70 acre site, beautiful piece of real estate in the middle of the park, sort of this green lung within the city, so it provides this beautiful backdrop, which is a perfect backdrop for a show like this. For people who are growing their own food, I suppose the great thing about Bloom is that we can show how you can do that and you can look at the aesthetics and make it very beautiful and interesting, particularly if it's a small space. And there's great ways, clever ways of doing that. So whether it's growing on the vertical plane, on walls, on interesting, using interesting containers or different sorts of systems, you can do all that here. What we're trying to do is to educate everyone, family, so we bring the children in for free to get kids engaged in gardening at a very, very young age, including how to grow food, sow their seeds and so on. Lots of the festival goers are really, really experienced gardeners, but quite a few of them are novice growers just like myself. And every year we always get asked the same question. How can I grow herbs? Herbs are literally one of the easiest things to grow. You don't need a lot of time, a lot of space, or a lot of money, which is just the perfect conditions to get you growing. So herbs can pretty much be split into two categories. You have perennial and annual. So perennial are the ones that just once you plant them once, they'll generally keep on coming back year on year out, once you look after them, of course. And then annuals are ones that really will only last for that first time. So you're going to have to replace them um, pretty much every year. So what I'm gonna do, is uh, just plant a container of perennial herbs. And as you can see, once again, you'll do trusty metal bucket, which we've drilled a couple of holes in because you absolutely still have to have the drainage. I've got really good quality compost, but it's also a good idea to put in a little bit of sand because herbs, especially the ones that would have come from the Mediterranean, like to have that kind of drier uh, condition for growing. So there's a bit of sand mixed in here already. So of course, it's really important to make sure that you grow the ones that you actually actually like and that you're going to use. So for me, it's certainly rosemary to go on the roast spuds. 
I'm going to put in lavender, which is actually a herb, not necessarily for cooking, although somebody might correct me on that. It's a little bit root bound. It's going to be very, very happy going into more space. So there's loads of varieties of sage. This is kind of your bog standard sage. There's purple sage. Um, again, very lovely for the look, the smell, clearly the taste. Thyme. Who doesn't have time for thyme? Yum. I'm going to put that on the other side of the rosemary. And then right smack center is we have chives. Really, really easy to grow. Oh yeah, holy moly, look at that. <laughs> We're rescuing these herbs, it's great. I'm gonna make sure that they're well covered in. Now check that out. Who does not have the space or the time to grow something as lovely as that? Isn't that magic? So not only are herbs incredibly easy to grow, but they're a fantastic addition to your cooking because quite frankly, they make everything taste better. Rosemary for the roast potatoes, sage for the roast chicken, mint for the mojitos, I don't know, whatever it is, you can just easily, within arm's reach probably, pick them, pluck them and use them and whatever it is, your meal is just gonna taste absolutely fantastic. It's finally harvest day. I'm so excited and all I want to do is pull them out of the ground. But as usual, Mick is spoiling the fun by telling me exactly what to do. One, one important thing just to mention is that you don't just pull, take it and grab it like that. Because what, what we want to do, and I'll explain why in a second, is, is keep all of this together yeah. basically. So you ease it out with a trowel from underneath basically. And you hope for the best that you've got a decent bulb of garlic, which we actually do, is not too bad at all. Oh, nice. Which is oh, the good. smell already. <laughs> There's a beautiful smell, which is part of the joy. We've talked about the fact that in a relatively small space, we've got, you know, a decent crop of garlic. The yeah. reason, you know, that we don't cut, <laughs> cut the stems off, right, is that we want to store these. So, you know, the lovely, the lovely garlic braids that you see? Yeah, synonymous with France. Yes. Yeah. So this garlic will keep for four to six months, no problem at all. If you want to store it, if you want to hang it up in, in, in a braid in the okay. kitchen or whatever, you need to dry it out a little bit because there's a huge amount of moisture in here, particularly in the stems and stuff like that still, and that'll it'll rot in storage basically really easy. So like in a in a shed or does it need to go into the, well, the airing press? I'd be I'd be putting these, you know, on a wire rack or a shelf somewhere, you know, either in your greenhouse, conservatory, your garage, any, anywhere out of okay. the out of the rain basically and dry them for about two weeks and you'll see these you know all the greenness basically will go out of these and then then you can then put them in to, a, to you're braid. ready to braid them yeah. and somebody knows how to braid hair if you've braided hair you can, you can braid garlic. Plant a garlic. Yeah. Cool. Right now it's time for the amazing Jessica Murphy to do her thing in the cafe kitchen. She's putting our gorgeous garlic front and centre by making a confit and showing us a few ways of using it. Now we've got some beautiful garlic out of the DIY garden that they've basically picked fresh and then dried out for us. So I peeled a few cloves here and I'm just going to add that to the pan like so. I'm basically going to cover them all in olive oil and I'm going to cook it very, very slowly. What's great about confit is that it can be used in pasta or basically you can crush it into breadcrumbs and crumble it over, say, cauliflower and cheese and you have some beautiful panko breadcrumbs and some herbs. You can just crush that into that and that just gives it a lovely garlicky, sweet flavour. So as low as possible, slow and low. OK, so this is what you end up with, some beautiful garlic cloves and some extra virgin olive oil there. So what I'm gonna do now is make some beautiful bruschetta with some local goat's cheese. Beautiful piece of sourdough that we prepared earlier. And I am just going to get the nasturtium leaves, which is gonna provide a beautiful peppery taste to the goat's cheese and the sweetness of the garlic cloves. Start by spreading this quite thickly, very generous on the bruschetta. So these are fully cooked, so they're very, very sweet. It does seem like a lot of garlic, but it's absolutely mild to the taste. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shake it up a bit by putting some of these beautiful peppery nasturtiums on it. Now, 
and that's a simple bruschetta. Another thing you can do with the confit garlic, and what I have here is some beautiful pureed butternut squash. It's quite rustic because you can serve it with any kind of stew or braised, braised beef, but what I'm gonna to add to it is the beautiful confit garlic. Sometimes you don't wanna see a whole clove of garlic, it kind of freaks people out, so I'm gonna actually just mash this in. See how soft it is, it just disappears into the puree. And it's just gonna add that really nice earthy flavor and smoky flavor of the garlic, but it's not gonna to be too stringent. So great for kids and elderly people or people on the mend that haven't been quite well. So yeah, simple puree. Now one last thing you can do with garlic, especially if it's this size and a bit wonky, sorry Mick, is basically roast it in the oven and squeeze it all out because it saves loads of time from peeling it. It doesn't break your heart. You don't have to stand, stand there for like 10 hours peeling all your little cloves. And we're just gonna chop the top off ever so slightly. Some tin foil, because we're gonna place this in the oven. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with some rock salt in the bottom, and that's just gonna help all the flavor penetrate all through that garlic. Okay, so basically, I'm gonna tie them up like a little tent. I'm gonna cook this for 40 minutes at 180 degrees. Don't forget to keep on checking on it because it depends on the size of the actual bowl. Right, now wait for it to cool down when it comes out of the oven because it's gonna be extremely hot. So we're just gonna investigate. Beautiful. Two things you can do with this is you could actually whip it with butter and make a beautiful garlic butter, or you could actually serve it with a beautiful jacket potato with sour cream. Or, last one thing, you can wrap it up, put it back in the fridge again. It lasts for up to seven days, so it's up to you. Look oh at God. this that looks what fun. beautiful presentation. It looks amazing. Clearly, garlic. garlic. This is your hero, dude. I know, and isn't it just amazing that it's put in its centre stage? Because garlic is always it's like, it's just a little, you know, the condiment that you chop into your spag oh, ball or whatever, whereas here it's absolutely centre stage. I love that. So we've got our garlic confit here, served here on bruschetta, which looks absolutely delicious which we're going to taste now, so the garlic coffee ah. right there in the centre. I'd to get a bit of the doughiness. Which is very messy and very, very delicious. Mm. That's great. Do you use a knife or fork for bruschetta? Right? I know, You're I was ready to get dragged up. And then we've got beautiful butternut oh. squash. Garlic coffee again, another use of it, oh, which is right into the centre of this with some beautiful butternut squash, very seasonal, very delicious as well. And that has just got that really oh, rich so garlicky nice. flavor right in there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Well done, Jess, for putting garlic center stage. No more condiment garlic. This is where no. it's at, putting it all right up. Champing the garlic. We love it. Bring it on. Brilliant. For more information about growing garlic and lots, lots more, head over to growcookie.ie and we'll see you next time when we celebrate another amazing vegetable. Grow Cookies is proudly sponsored by StopFoodWaste.ie and Bort Bia.